Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is going to be on a sleeping pad from Sea to Summit. So let's get started. All right, everybody, getting started with this product. I just want to let you guys know it is the Etherlite XT Extreme in a large size. And of course, coming from Sea to Summit. I do have the current listing pulled up right now on Amazon.ca. And this is the most readily available source that I can find for me to get this product. So I'm just going to read off what they have here on Amazon.ca. This is the large size and it is a tapered sleeping pad. And you'll see what I'm talking about with the shape. It is a mummy cut, nice rounded edges, but it is a tapered pad. So this being the large size, it comes in at 78 inches by 25 inches by four inches thick. So a generous size for this pad. It packs down 7.3 by 11 inches, what basically what you guys are seeing right here, the pack size. And it's not a firm pack size either. It does have a little bit of, of wiggle room there. So if you do need to compress it, it can, uh, it can do that. It weighs 2.1 pounds and it includes a stuff sack, repair kit, and an inflation sack. And we're going to touch on that because that is kind of an interesting feature. Just coming up through some of the specs that they have here. I'm just going to touch on the big specs, the ones that really stand out that I believe people are going to want to know. The R value of this pad, where it is a four season winter rated pad, is a whopping 6.2 for an R value. And yes, that is ASTM verified. The surface is a non-slip 30 denier and 40 denier nylon face fabric, making it quite durable. That right there is pretty much the, the big specs that I can find. Uh, the price is not very friendly. So on Amazon.ca currently, time of filming is $412 Canadian. Keep in mind, it is an R value of 6.2, ASTM verified, and it is from a reputable brand. So that is it for the specs. Let's get this guy out of the pack and see what it comes with. All right, just poured a hot cup of tea. I do have the wood stove burning. So that was a little bit of the background noise with the kettle on there. Just to clarify what that noise was. Um, let's dive into this right away. So one end of this stuff sack is actually a pump sack and it is connected. There are drawstrings on one end as well as drawstrings on the other end. Now. The orange end is the opening to get the pad out and the other end is gray. That is where the pump sack is connected. So I'm just going to open this up, pull the pad out of here. And this pad is insulated, not with down fill, but a synthetic fill. And that kind of, kind of imparts to the size of it. It doesn't compress down very, very small, but like I said, it is squishy and you can definitely feel the insulation in there. Very, very thick insulation. And it does have a quilted pattern and we'll see that once I do inflate it. But first off, I wanna take a look in here because there is a patch kit. So opening up the other drawstring, we can actually push the, the pump sack out. Now, the one thing with this pump sack, it does have the fitting on the end it does not come off of the storage bag. So I find that uh, a little cumbersome sometimes to inflate it, but realistically it gets the job done and it does the job very well. Having it attached means you're not gonna lose it also. So it is one bag instead of two. So it does come with a patch kit, an extra valve for the sleeping pad itself, some literature in there. So if you do need to make a field repair, you can do so. And then it does have a couple pieces of literature in here, basically just stuff off their website, looking at their tents, their sleeping bags, things of that nature that you could find on Sea to Summit's website. So we'll move that off to the side. But this pump sack, as you guys can see, is rather long. It is a very large pump sack and basically, you loft it up from the top, inflate, and push all the air into the sleeping pad. These are becoming very, very popular. And for me, I really like a pump sack to a sleeping pad, any sleeping pad, no matter the brand, for a four season pad. The biggest reason for that is you're gonna introduce ambient air and there's not gonna be any moisture from inside of your body going inside of the pad, which could then damage the insulation in the pad over time, create mold and mildew and all that stuff. Not only that, for those of you who go winter camping, you'll know that if you do inflate your sleeping pad during the daytime with warm air in your body, as it gets colder in the evening, your, your sleeping pad is going to lose pressure. So you're going to have to introduce more air, more warm air, and you're going to have to recycle kind of doing that method over and over again. With the pump sack, realistically, you're putting in ambient air. So if it's cold outside, you're going to put cold air inside of the pad, which is not a problem because the pad's insulated and it's going to keep you warm by reflecting your body heat. So with that said, 
I am basically going to roll this out down on the floor and give you guys a, a basic look at it. And then what I'd like to do is actually count how many pump sacks full of air it takes to inflate the pad. And then from there, we can actually start taking a look at the product itself while it's inflated. All right, so moving down here towards the floor area, I should have enough room in here to demonstrate this product. My only fear is the wood stove. I don't want to bump that while it's inflated because that is very hot and it might melt it. But with that aside, I'm basically just going to roll it out, foot end down towards you guys, head end up towards me, open it up. And as we inflate this, it will unroll and loft up itself. So we do have dual valves and I'll show this very close so you guys can see it, but there are dual valves, one for an inflate. And then if you open up the second one, there's a quick dump valve, which is very helpful for packing up quickly. You just pop that, squeeze the air out. It's a rather quick pack up. So what I'm gonna do is simply attach the pump sack and the pad is totally empty right now. In fact, when I even open up that valve, it actually sucked in some air. That's how empty it was. So it's starting to loft up a little bit. We're going to fill this and I'm gonna do this real time for you guys. So if you're not interested in this, pass it. If you are, stay tuned. Just gonna shake it up and we're gonna count. So we got one there. I'm going to try my hardest to get these full without blowing inside of the pump sack. That's two. Doing this outdoors, I will mention, is a little bit easier, especially if you have a breeze. You can actually catch the breeze in the pump sack and it will inflate it. Three there. So we're at five, and I'm going to have to move down a bit because I'm running out of room there. That is six, and I think one more might do it. All right, so six to seven pump sacks full is what we're looking at there, depending on how lucky you get. If you're outside with a little bit of a breeze, you might be able to squeeze more air into your pump sack than I was inside. So the pump sack is also usable for many things. You can put clothing inside of there and kind of tuck the ends over and keep clothing dry, possibly jam it full with a sweater, use it as a pillow. There are uses to the pump sack. I'm just gonna to toss it off to the side for now. And I think what I'm gonna do is maybe bring you guys in a little closer. I'm gonna get on top of the pad so you guys can kind of get a, an idea of how a body would fit onto it. And then we'll do a stand up comparison, just kind of looking at the pad, um, comparing some of the features with uh, maybe some other pads that you guys have and have a good look at the valve, have a good look at the quilting pattern, and we'll take it from there. All right, so right away, definitely comfortable, I can tell you that. And I actually, my head fits inside of these quilted patterns. So there is a spot up here that they have kindly marked out for a pillow and it is definitely warm. So I should mention down on the floor of my bus right now, it is actually below zero degrees Celsius because I just came in my bus and lit the wood stove. So all the heat is above touching this floor. It is very cold right now. The bus is not warm laying on the pad. I cannot feel any cold and in fact I can actually see my breath from laying down here. I don't feel any cold and I have used this pad in the winter many times. Uh, you guys can check that out on my other YouTube channel, Lone Wolf 902 But for now, give you guys a really good look at this right here. It is a side sleeper as well. Fairly comfortable on the hips, the head, and as well as a stomach sleeper. 
It's durable enough to roll around, and if you guys listen, there's no crinkling chip bag sound. So there's no mylar inside. It is synthetic insulation, and it's a nice, slick, smooth fabric. So when you are inside of a, a sleeping bag, you can glide on this, but it's not too slippery that you're going to slip off, which is always a bonus. All right, so standing the pad upwards, uh, clearly my bus is not tall enough for it to stand totally upright, but if I could squeeze that in there and give you guys a little bit of a comparison there. I'm five foot seven, I'm not extremely tall, and this is the large, so I have plenty of room top to bottom, and it being nice and generous and wide, I don't feel I'm gonna fall off or my elbows are gonna hit the cold ground in the winter, which is always a bonus as well. You guys can make out some of this quilting pattern. It, uh, it does offer these little spots that I find, they hold my elbows. So when I'm laying on my back, my elbows will find one of these spots and it will actually hold it nice as well as my heels down towards the foot end. My heels will find those spots and it'll hold my feet still, as well as my head, it'll find one of those spots. So this quilting pattern actually serves to hold your body from sliding off the pad if you do happen to be on uneven ground. And it's proven itself time and time again to hold me on the pad and keep me warm, even down to negative 22 degrees Celsius with just one pad directly on ice and snow. All right, so pulling the sleeping pad up off the floor and giving it kind of a sideways look, maybe this will help capture those uh, those quilted patterns just a little bit differently so you guys can get a really good idea of that. Uh, while I have it up here, you guys can notice that the branding is on the top. So see the summit in silver. We then have the model down here, Etherlite XT Extreme. And we've got the little logo down there, size large. So there's a little bit of information on there. We do have uh, a sprung cells. So I guess that's their proprietary uh, quilted pattern, if, if you will. We do have a little pillow lock system marking up here. So they are marking that as the spot to put your head. So it actually cradles your head, like I was saying with the elbows, heels and whatnot. So I'm just gonna pull this over. And this valve system up here, so bright orange valve system, very easy to see. So it is a double valve. If I pop one, no air comes out. And there is a replaceable seal in the patch kit that you can replace this with just in case it does get damaged. And I I would almost recommend putting a little bit of paracord on this because I found that when I was out, my fingertips were frozen. I couldn't actually grip it. Uh, so I may put a tiny little tab of paracord on there so I can actually grab a hold of it. But warming up your fingers, it's no problem. Closing that valve then, if I open up the main valve, you guys will see it is a very rapid deflate. So I'll give you guys a close look at that so you can see what I'm talking about. But the pad does deflate very, very quickly, which makes pack up in bad weather very quick. So having a really close look at this valve system, I have the massive dump valve opened up right now. So there are two valves in one. We do have that little replacement piece of rubber right here that just simply pulls out and is replaceable. Snapping that shut will hold in all the air. And when you want to inflate, simply place the pump sack into this, fill it up, and then you can simply close it. These little holes right here is what I was talking about, adding a little piece of paracord. It might be beneficial to some of you, maybe not. On one side of the pump sack, there are some illustrations, pictures, and instructions on how to inflate the sleeping pad. I think it's pretty basic. Pop it on there, fill it up, press the air in, presto, you're done. Uh, there is a little bit of information on here though. It does confirm that it is a 21 millimeter plug to inflate the mat. So that is the nozzle here, 21 millimeters. And that'll be helpful to some people who might want to go with a different style of pump sack or those who might have little tiny battery operated or USB chargeable inflators. Uh, I know some people use those. So it is a 21 millimeter and it says blow at least 30 centimeters one foot into stuff sack. So it's actually telling you to blow into the pump sack. I don't do that, but it is saying to do it. So it's up to you guys. Now, one interesting thing with this pump sack is there are two valves. So if you do happen to have a different pad and you need to utilize a different size little plug here, there is a 15 millimeter, but it's on the inside. So if you turn it inside out, 21 on the outside, 15 on the inside. 
So there is a secondary right there. So if you're camping with a friend who happens to have a sleeping pad and they ruin their stuff sack or their pump sack, or maybe they forgot it, there are two in one. So 15 and 21, that's a hidden little feature there. Most people might miss. It is there, you gotta look for it. Another thing is with the patch kit, if I can grab this here. There are 3M stick-on patches and they're already cut and contoured. So basically it's matching fabric. You can stick it on there and that'll get you through the night. I wouldn't imagine that these would last as a permanent patch, but there are one, two, three, four, uh, five in there contoured cut. So they're nice and rounded so they won't rip off that easily. And in this other bag, I'm gonna open this up just to confirm this because I have not opened it yet. There are one, two, three thin patches. So these are really thick, heavy duty patches. And then these are fabric matching patches. These are more like gear aid tape that you would stick on just to get you through like a real small, tiny pinhole. So there are a few of those in a square pattern. And then there are one, two, three round, about the size of a one inch circle. And then one replacement rubber seal for the air valve. All right, everybody. So that is a pretty detailed look, but a simple demonstration of the Sea to Summit Ether Light pad. There are two versions of this. There's the men's version, and then there are a women's version as well. The main differences between those is going to be the size. So a little bit lengthier, uh, a little bit narrower just basically differences between men and women sizes that you would typically find in camping gear the build quality on both of them i don't know i cannot confirm because i only have this pad but i would assume it's basically the same just difference in sizes you have to follow up with see the summit on their website to confirm that to make sure that they are the same i believe they are the exact same r value of 6.2 astm verified as mentioned earlier and they both come with the pump sacks and things of that nature um, i do believe there is a color difference though i think the women's the plug is actually pink and the men's it's orange so that's all i got for you guys for the sea to summit sleeping pad now it's your turn what do you think what do you guys think about this pad uh just basically looking at what i did here now i didn't do any major testing because it's kind of hard to do testing on a demonstration channel being inside right now i do use this outdoors on my other channel and perhaps i will get out if you guys are interested and do a little bit of a outside comparison i'm not sure how the testing would go with numerous pads but i just wanted to get out and show you guys this pad because i've been getting asked a lot of questions on my other channel about it so if you guys are interested in seeing this in action jump over there the link is down in the description and uh, that's basically all i got so what do you guys think of the etherlight pad thumbs up or thumbs down let me know in the comment section and i'll be checking it till next time peace out guys and i'll see you in the next video